Welcome to the inaugural Daily Stampede film room with Colin Sherwin, Anthony Vito, Seth Varnador, our expert, and from Hello. the fan perspective, Cedric Padilla. Go uh, <laughs> You know, unrelated to Cedric, uh, four star hotels at two star prices. Hotwire.com. <laughs> Um, you know, with Seth joining the staff, it felt only right, uh, to try to do a film room, um, from the TDS perspective, try to pick out a couple plays that are key. Uh, Seth's done a great job doing that so far this year, uh, written, and we're doing, you know, mini pivot to video for this, um, his stories will not go away. It's just an, an added bonus that we're able to do this. Um, so hopefully, you know, you guys like it and we can continue to do it. Um, Seth, uh, before we get started, what, do, what are we going to see today, uh, tonight? Um, and what, what plays are you wanting to break down? What, what should the fans be looking for, uh, during this video session? So all I've done is I've uploaded the, uh, offense from the South Carolina state game. So we can kind of go through that really play by play and kind of discuss um you know if you guys see a play and you want to kind of discuss it more we can stop i can go slow motion uh we can tell it straight do all that kind of stuff so we'll just kind of go through play by play and i think i got just about everyone from the game on and um i know even play one's got some good stuff we can get right into um just so you can see the design and stuff like that but we'll kind of go through if you guys see something that you want to look at more i'll stop it we can go through it slow motion and kind of try to decide what the goal of that play was what they were trying to do exactly, and then maybe why why it worked, why it didn't work. Yeah, so actually the first play is one that I, I noticed right away when I went back and watched, and so uh, I guess we just jump right in here. Um, 10 personnel, uh, looks like your standard air raid type of set here. You guys ready to get into it here? I'll, I'll put it oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, Rise and Fire. <laughs> Hashtag pivot to video. Yeah, it's a slower there pivot than I anticipated, but... Much slower pivot. All right, so here we go. So, so um, 10 personnel here, unless you want to count Mitch as, because uh, Mitch is lined up outside, I guess you could call it 11 if you wanted to count Mitch as a tight end. It's just yeah, they, They'd call it 11 just because he's in there, but it's a two by two. You're going to see this from SMU a lot in a few weeks. For sure. This right. is a, like a standard air raid type of set. Um, and then we will go stretch play to the uh, field side here and watch what happens. So we're going to block there, we'll block, oh, block there. His job is to reach this guy. Everybody's just reaching to the right. Maybe I can get to second level, probably not, just because it's a tough block. Leave him, get to second level. He's your lead blocker right there. So right here, you got motion, hand him the ball in the jet sweep. So when you look at it right there, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good play. So we'll watch it once, full speed. Keep your eye on number 77, the right tackle. Right here, we'll watch full speed. Don't get the reach block. Then it gets strung out for minus three. So let's go back and watch it. So, right, you may look and think that, okay, this is really two errors. He doesn't, we don't get a reach here, right? He doesn't get a reach. And then the back doesn't get a reach, right? So you may be thinking, okay, that's two errors. But what happens is he gets pushed. He's trying to reach right here. He gets pushed back in the backfield. So right here, he gets pushed back. That pushes the back's path even further. So now the back is having to come out here. And now the jet sweep is having to come even further back. And so really that block, and then he misses it, got to avoid, and now I can't get outside leverage because I wasn't able to attack upfield immediately. So what looks like schematically before the snap, a really good play, ends up going for, I think, a three-yard loss. Yeah, and it's just, you know, the, the problems on this offensive line are pretty well documented. Um, it looks like everyone else does a pretty decent job here just staying yeah. uh, in their lane, but you got to be able to, to set that edge, especially on, on a stretch or a sweep, and um, this just did not, you know, Norman goes, like, you know, backwards here right away. You can't, and that's just going to string the play out. The simple coaching point on this, 
and like the most simple coaching point you can do offensive line right here is just get your helmet on the play side. So get your helmet, the place to the right, get your helmet on the right side. And he never does, and that's so you never have leverage. So yeah. the play is kind of killed just by that one missed block. And hey. so got it. And he's not even the the he's not even real wide either, is the kind of the worst part of it. It's not like he's a wide nine or anything. Yeah. <laughs> just, so. uh, just straight beat. Now I having gone through and watched this um spoiler alert, it does I, one thing I really impressed me was South Carolina State did do, do a real nice job of disguising their coverages, not on this specific play, but I thought they did a nice job there. And two, I did think the offensive line did get better as the game went on. Um, the first quarter is just a series of tire fires, but uh, it does get a little bit better and a little bit better. So I think we'll part but of this it, one's pretty bad. Yeah, I think part of it is too. They they decided they were going to come out and they were like, all right, we'll just we'll, we're going to play up and throw the ball because they hadn't been really been able to throw the ball, make the plays in the passing in the first two games. And then once you saw that deep post shot over the top, well, now maybe I got to loosen up a little bit more. So I think that that helped too, was showing them that I can hit these shots over the top. So you guys ready to move on the next play? Yes, sir. All right, so now you're in second 13. Still two by two. They're just running hitches, trying to get back. They're trying to get back a little bit of yardage. Quarterback does a good job here. You kind of want to, we've always taught these, you kind of inside out it. If you got this one, especially in this kind of look, it looks kind of like it's a cover three look. If the flat player stays on number two, I can always go outside if he takes this one. If he flies out, then I got, I'm, I'm already looking inside first, so I'm good. If he stays right there, then I can get out late because this guy's bailing. So quarterback does a good job going inside out. Just got to make the catch. What do you think about that blitz pick up there? I mean, it, I don't even know if it was blitz. But yeah, they did send five. This is, but... full, this is full slide. Um, so this is, I don't know if this is their quick game every time, but they did this in quick game quite a few times. This is the full slide. So uh, it looks like, so you're going to get, I believe, everybody stepping. And this is something they did last year. You're going to get the back coming across. To block the defensive end. So right here, that's really a, I mean, that's a pretty good job. But this is like the easier one we talked about on the podcast yesterday. This is something they did last year quite a bit. So this is something that shouldn't be too foreign to them. And a lot of times that guy who's making the, the block there in the backfield was Mitch last year. Um, yeah. But now, yeah, but this was, I believe that's Kronk right out there. Yeah, and play. he does a, he does a decent job of getting him out of the way. He probably they probably really want him to attack that a little bit more and just throw your shoulder pad through his thigh board. But um, but I mean, there's a pretty decent pocket right there. Um, the thing that's kind of stood out to me, like through this game at least, uh, and early late in the Georgia Tech game, was Kronk's blocking has gotten a lot better. Um, he wiped out a blitzer on the. Uh, Johnny Ford touchdown last week against uh, Georgia Tech, and there was a few times where he he went head up against the defensive end and like upended them or at least stopped the rush a little bit. Um, I know I mentioned it in our you know mailbag uh, for this week, but um, <clears throat> if he's not getting his running game going, at least it's not affecting his pass blocking so far. Um, I know like like in basketball, like if you're not getting the ball. Um, you kind of your defense kind of slacks, um, but at least with his pass blocking skills so far this year, we've still seen um, an uptick at least uh, in decent to good pass protection. And uh, I think Sean King's kind of harped on that, where you're not going to play unless you can pass block. And Kronk's done a pretty damn good job of it so far. And that's another thing you've been talking about kind of all year that one of the reasons he came back is to show, hey, I can, I can I'm a good in the I'm good in the pass game as a receiver. Well, he's also, you know, he also wants to put on film that, hey, I'm, I can block if you need me to as well. Like, I, I can pass protect. I'm not going to be a guy that you can only put in certain situations. So that it kind of goes uh, hand in hand with him coming back to maybe get more catches as well. So that's something he's another thing he wants to show to those next level guys. All right, so let's go to third. We'll go move on to third down here, third and 13. So right here, 
It's hard to tell on the TV broadcast exactly what's called. This is kind of South Carolina State would do this as like a third and long thing, is they'd go to more of a odd odd front, and they this is their end. They'd bump this guy out, stand him up, because I think they've been three four in the past, but. It's hard to see the way they zoom in. They might just be hoping to get the shallow cross and let him run. I'm sure there's something coming. There may be a dig or something coming in here behind it. But this is probably one of the only times that maybe Jordan pulled it down a little early here. This is one he maybe could have stuck in there. You got your back coming, doing a pretty good job right here. This is pretty good pass protection, really. I mean, you kind of want to anchor right there a little bit and not get pushed too far in the backfield. But he did it later where he kind of shuffled and moved. But you can kind of see maybe what he saw the helmet flash and decided to pull the ball down here on third down, see if he can just make something happen. But I'm yeah, guessing. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Watching this back, it seemed more of a coverage sack than uh, anything. I mean, he probably had Johnny opening, open on that crossing route, just didn't hit it. Yeah. Uh, but I was I was chalking this up to a coverage sack than anything. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but the and, offensive line really did wrong. Yeah, and this is you can see right here that you know that that four man slide right here. This is done really well. So this is like a new, this is like probably one of the newer things. I'm not sure they they may have done this last year. I didn't watch enough, but I know they did a lot of this. But there's four man slides. So right here you're big on big, so that means your tackles main on man, and these four are sliding and they're taking these four. And so you can see right there, they do a really good job of picking up those four. And then your back has the linebacker if he comes. Now, what I think ends up, what I think probably happens here, it's hard to tell exactly, but he may, they may have been bringing him or he may have added on. But the back does a good job staying in because he probably has a check release. So he can probably check if that guy doesn't blitz and release out. So pretty good pass protection, but I think you're right. I think it must the, the coverage must have been pretty good downfield. And so you kind of get that. So it goes in the stat book as a sack, but really the offensive line did a pretty good job on this play. All right, so we got first and 10. So this one, just watching, this one is a, uh, I think they just missed the snap count. So this is like one of those ones that's like, you know, you can't really, it's, it's just, it's really hard to draw anything from this play because these two don't even yeah. get out of their stance. Yeah, I think it's Jennings who, who just doesn't like even move on the snap level. I actually marked this as one of the plays I want to talk about. Is this is this just yeah, not watching the ball, not getting the snap count? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but both neither of them move. So there's yeah something something's going on here. So and that's kind of that kind of kills the play because what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean you can see they're running into each other. I think the center might be pulling, possibly. Okay, so, three guys, Mitch, Norman, and Jennings, do not move on that play. Yeah, so the center just snaps the ball. I'm not – so it, this could be like one of those, okay, new starter, like, problems, right? Like, so new starter, different cadence maybe, different sounding cadence at least, right? So I, I believe the idea of the play was basically down, down, Maybe leave him down, down. Pull him inside for whoever, and now you're reading this guy. All right, so he's he's your read key. You're basically it's like a way to run power without needing a fullback. Uh, they call it toss read. Clemson lived off this with Deshaun Watson. So basically, I'm reading here. They ran a little bit with uh, Barnett against Wisconsin, but if he flies with a toss. Then, in theory, my center's pulling to right there, or my guard's pulling to right there, center on this play, and I just follow him inside. And now I got everybody pinned inside with the center pulling for probably this guy. That's the idea. Now, if he comes, if he flies inside, I just pitch it out, and now I got my back one on with the safety. So that, I think that was the idea behind the play, but this play is just dead on arrival just because of, you know, just a, something that happens every now and then. Just like if you're in the shotgun a lot, there's going to be a bad snap every now and then. So, unfortunately, it kills this play, but I think McLeod still gets he still get one out of it, or at least got back to the line of scrimmage. 
So now you go second and 11. I think they're going to roll to three, cover three here. So he's going to roll to the middle. I guess it'd be more this way, right? He'll drop. He'll drop. He'll come up and play flat. He's going to blitz, so now he's got a match to the flat. So this is like kind of a perfect call against three. On both sides, they're going slant. Number two's in the flat. So all you got to do on either side is read number two. If if you if it is three, you just read him. You're gonna double it. There you go. Read him. So if he flies to flat, like his responsibility, there should be a hole right here. If he drops back, if he sees a slant, drops back underneath it, the flat should be open because he's left his flat responsibility now. So uh, actually do a pretty good job right here with the blitz. You could say. Hey, two blitzed, put it on him right now because he's got him outflanked. But he also does a good job anticipating this guy's running full speed. There is no way, I don't care if it's Deion Sanders, he's going to be able to stop and get back to a ball that's thrown right here. So you're really good either way. Now you could have just said, let's take him and you know maybe he breaks a tackle up the sideline, you got something. But this isn't a bad job right here. I'll watch it full speed. The corner makes a break on it, but that's a, I think that is a play that maybe could have been made. Or even, you know, ideally you want it to throw a little lower, but you can kind of see to both sides. It's kind of a mirrored concept. So both sides are running. You got slant and then the flat player. So not a bad read, really. Maybe not the best read, but not a bad one. And then just a little bit better throw, and you probably have the first down here pretty close to it. So I don't know. What do you guys, do you guys think that was catchable? I think it was a dicey throw to make. Um, he fit it in there, but it was still dicey. Um, yeah. I would have gone probably with a quick out. To, I think it's Mitch right there on the, on yeah. the bottom of the screen. I would have gone that route. Yeah, that's what, that's what yeah, if, he, if that guy comes, just drop it right now. Right. So, what did Olivia think? Because I I know she's watching this with us. She is upset, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> she thinks that ball should be in the numbers. Yeah, uh, she's real pissed off that every Randall play. dropped it. Four verts every play. But this, yeah, this is a tough one because you're sending this dude in some traffic too. So that's a tough one to be like, go up and get that thing, and you might get smoked too. But you know, such hit you on the hands though. He's uh. Yeah, you want to Randall catch you, that? He's in the hospital. No, yeah. he might yeah, be anyway, so you might as well catch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might you might get smoked anyway, so you might as well catch. It. But yeah, that is a tough one. I watching it live, I thought just you know get it out here, but you can see what he's seeing. And again, uh, looks like full slide. Pretty good job picking it up right here. And this one's really good because they try to kind of screw him by sending him inside and him off the edge so they're hoping maybe that they're doing that four-man slide and then now i got to come off the edge and we got to exchange and maybe make him think a little bit but since they had the full slide called on he just steps down takes that guy in the back just comes off the edge just like it was always drawn up so pretty good scheme by south carolina state but they had the perfect call on for it so All right, so now we're third and 11 here So you got two receivers here, tight end and receiver up top. All right, so this Seth, is a screen. We, well, I'm, yeah. so, I'm sorry, said, what do we call that loop motion? Because we saw that a few times. I, I don't know. We never, we never. I don't know. We never. <laughs> we we weren't doing all that. So I'm not sure what I'm not sure what he calls it. We, I mean, we call like, you know, we we've gone in and out, and we call it like return or you know something like that. But yeah, I've never seen this one. I think it's, it's They did mostly, that a few different times. I've, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. It was just with Johnny. Yeah, I think it's mostly when – I'm sure they got something off of it, but it's mostly, I think, window dressing just to – I'm sure they may have something. They may, they may have something where he motions back here and they're running like triple option off of, off of like zone read or something. 
And they probably also have where they're just going to drop it to them right there. So, But they're running the screen to the right. And this is the one I think. This one's, you know, this is another one that might be on the quarterback here. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan's got an I mean, this ball. I mean, yeah, that's just yeah. nerves and a, and a freshman in his first start, it looks like. Because that's even actually if he's well outside, blocked. Yeah. 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 Even if he's well out here. He's going to go. Mitch I think he'll push right here, but I think he'll might. I think if he catches it, if he just puts it on up here, he's got a chance to push him past because he's, you know, he's a pretty good athlete. So he's got a chance to stick his foot in the ground and get vertical. Maybe I can just push him past basically. And then you got, you know, looking like two for one, but, you know, yeah, probably yeah. further down once they get even better at it. It'll be, I'm going to safety, I'm coming back here, I'm right there, and then a good throw. It's like it's pretty much exactly what you want, especially on a third and 11 where everyone's thinking screen or draw. Um, the motion, I think, entices them to think screen this way. So they got a lot of action to the motion here. And the quarterback, right, McLeod looks there. He's gone. He even kind of he even kind of slides this way a little bit. You can see even he's trying to read it, right? He's trying to read the screen like the Wisconsin guy did, and he gets off coming to this side, and now we're running it back out here. So pretty much everything exactly how you want it, except maybe this and definitely that. So but, Seth. Um... That seemed to be the the problem with Jordan uh, on Saturday was uh, those short passes across the middle to the backs. Um, he mm. missed twice high on two screens, and then Johnny Ford just happened to make a great catch on it looked like just like a he leaked out of the backfield and cut across on a shallow. Yeah. Um, is that I, I think Jordan may be like six one six two. Is that a height thing or like a jitter thing that he keeps missing high on those? He probably just – it was probably a couple where he didn't – he may have been trying to get it out quickly and didn't set his feet maybe or – you know, a lot of times when you're high, you're not uh, – you you're not transferring your weight properly. So a lot of times the balls take off on you if you're doing that. Um, yeah, I know. So it, could have, it could have been something just that simple where he didn't have his feet set and or may, and maybe he was trying to throw it all arm and didn't – you know, wasn't able to kind of rotate his hips through or something it could have been something that simple and it or it could have been some guys get jacked up and they miss high just because they're so jacked up but i know um bj daniels had that kind of problem where he just would never set his feet he would be like yeah. jumping to throw screen passes and that that was yeah. kind of the end result he would either uh drill it into the ground or sail it you know four feet over yeah. the receiver's head so um same kind of height uh but i think jordan's probably i mean Already, I think he's a more skilled passer, um, accuracy-wise. BJ did have a cannon, but yeah. um, he's pretty polished that's... for a fret. Yeah, I think he's pretty polished for a red shirt, for a red shirt. Yeah, guy, some with some of the stuff he's doing, but it's still it's gonna. There'll be times you're just trying to get it out of your hands as fast as you can, and you know maybe your feet aren't quite in sync. Yeah, I mean for all the crap that we give uh, Weiner at Plant, uh, he's done a pretty decent job at molding quarterbacks. Um, yeah, Robert they, they Mark, have a, despite they have a his struggles. Uh, Robert Marv, Fur Aaron Murray, Stephen Garcia. Fur uh, his name's Furry Murray, first of all. Oh. <laughs> that was his nickname um, when he was in middle school. So um, I, the other thing that, I, I mean, he's he is a little high here, um, but the, the design and the concept looks really good. And I think, mm -hmm. Jordan, after the first two drives, I think you see him settle in um, pretty nicely here. So this is definitely... It felt a little jittery, but as we go along, you, especially the two touchdowns here in the first half were, were really impressive for a freshman kid. So, yeah. Like right here, you see, you can kind of, if you're just watching his feet, he's got time to just plant and throw, and he just kind of is like, and I think it might have been one of those things where he's so open, I'm going to just try to like aim it into him and just drop it to him, and it's really, you know, just, just throw it. Just set your feet, throw it to him. Yeah, for sure. So. All right, so first down at 25, third drive here, I think. Did you have one for this, Kyle? I did. Um, what I did here is it looked like we, instead of zone blocking here, I think we sort of man blocked on this one, and it looked like it was pretty successful. Um, I think it was hat on hat instead of instead of slide. Let me. Yeah, they go. Yeah, um, I, power. 
they're going to that the the play they run a little bit later where he'll he'll kind of invite the one. This is the same play forward score the touchdown. They're just doing it out of a different formation instead of a three by one. Um, what what they end up doing is getting him out of the box by making this guy a receiver later in the game. But this is the same idea: three receivers to this side, seeing them overload it, and then later they flex him out, and now he's gone too. But he'll invite him upfield. And then it looks like they're really almost doubling here. Uh, this might be Dart here with the tight end. I think later in the game they runs the guard. Is this the guard or the, or the tackle that pulls here? So it's the tackle pulling here. So this is um, this might be Dart. So now I'm just going to be here, block back, double there, and now he's going to pull up inside in this vacated hole for him. I, mean, I could have run through that hole. So yeah, yeah, so that's pretty good right there. And now, now this is the safety oh, right here, right? So here's the guy that ends up getting in on the play. This is the safety. Old adage in football, uh, old coaching adage is, hey man, all I can do is get you one on one with the safety. After that, it's up to you, because you know, unless you know you're running the ball with a quarterback. Even so, you got to ease a runner. So you're you're always gonna the math's never gonna be quite in your favor. So all I can do is get you one on one with the safety, and then it's your job after that. So right here, he breaks the tackle and picks up ten. Yeah, that's like really well done on all sides yeah. there. Um, you know, that's I think that's exactly what you know you're trying to do. This is exact. I mean, if you could draw it up like this every time, I think you'd take it. Um, the double of the nose here, so. Do you want to have either Cecil or I'm not sure if that is a left guard there. Uh, who is that left guard? Yeah, it's a left sure. guard. Yeah, I'm, I'm could sure. could that left guard pull off and get to the second level a little bit quicker? He, he, does, he does. Yeah, just check him out. He does late. So I was kind of thinking the same thing. But if you watch him late, right, this isn't like the perfect, but this is pretty good right here. You would want to be a little bit like you know, more of a half of man, but I mean, that's, that's not like they don't just sit there and let you do it. So it's kind of, you know, you got to make do and then see, he comes off there. Right. So okay. maybe, see, maybe yeah. he could have come off a little bit sooner. Maybe if I can get to come off a little bit sooner, I can just pin him because he mm -hmm. is the guy that ends up pushing the back out of bounds, but he does get off and gets a piece of him. But it's, yeah, it is a little. But if he's able to get off maybe sooner, and now he's got him hooked. Now you got your back with nobody out there. Yeah, that's that is Demetrius Harris, by the way, who was the the guard on that play. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, we'll take this all day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We'll we'll take the ten yard rush. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but you, no, you are right. If he could, if he could get, if they could get this thing overtaken quick, and then I could get that he's got, it and I can climb quicker. Now this play maybe goes from a ten yard play to a touchdown, but you know. The, this is the key block. If I get that, if I get to him later, it's kind of gravy. And then what they do later is just be like, all right, well, I don't, we don't even have to block him. We'll take the tight end out, and now he's out of the play. So later they just like, all right, we, we don't even have to block that guy. We don't have to worry about getting off. So, so then you go first and ten here. This one's a quick snap. I think it's just like quarterback, quarterback lead or quarterback ISO is what it looks like. I don't think it was a draw. That slide, uh, oof, looks dangerous. Uh, yeah, I, that yeah. was a little. I didn't see that one in the press. Well, that was a little freaky watching on film. That's a good way to hurt yourself. So we got basically. I'm gonna big on big there. They're doubling there. The center's climbing for this backer, and then you got the back climbing for this backer. So anytime you have a quarterback in the run game, you can really even up the numbers in the box, especially if they're gonna play with two high safeties. So this is a pretty good job right here, and then a really good cut. I mean, this is kind of exactly what you want in zone. I want to press the hole, and there I think they're using kind of zone um, principles here. Press the hole, and then if I have to cut back once I press the hole, I do. And then the slide here is a little scary, but he is keeping himself safe. But they did get him one on one with the safety. <laughs> yeah, right that's, that's really that's all you want. Yeah, if you can get that, it's like my job is done as a coach. It's it's your ball. Good luck. 
I've done my job. And then the dudes that are really good are the guys that make that guy miss. So then, okay, so we picked up seven there. So now you got second and three. Uh, and trips again here. Three by one, showing too high again. He's going to spin to the middle. A lot of coaches will teach. If you watch this guy, especially teams that like to disguise coverage, just watch the weak side safety. He'll tell you everything because typically teams spin him to the middle if they're going to like spin to three or something or too high, and he'll he'll come down. It's usually the weak side safety that's the spinner. So some coaches teach just if you get eyes on the weak side safety and you know what he's doing, you you may, you you can figure out the any coverage if you understand what he's doing. So if if he's high here and we can see um, the the route is to the outside, but it's I mean there's no safety over the top here. Is yeah. there any way that you could you know I mean spot for a hitch and go or even just like a, a straight go on the outside? Because if you think that that free safety is gonna you know go yeah. high, could you you know take advantage of that and try and get man coverage to the outside there and, and try and get a little outside release and up the field? When I played when I played for Kerwin in high school. We had, like, if we had a hitch called or a curl called and this guy was up, it automatically converted to a go route. Like, and this was with high school kids. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure they got that in there. If, if, you know, if here, if he's up, now he's off and he kind of bails, so he probably right. stays with hitch. But if he stays, you know, if he would have stayed a little, if he would have kind of been <laughs> up in his face, it might have just gone right to a go route. Got it. Interesting. And then, yeah, I need. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Good catch here, but uh, and then um. So interesting scheme here, and then another pretty good job right here, picking it up. They're putting him out real wide. Trying to get this guy to set real wide to him. They'll bring him in here, and then they're going to bring him. Hopefully, they're thinking that w once the tackle sets. I'm, I'm going to come right in there in this giant hole that you're creating by setting that wide for this wide rusher. So he goes to set out. He sees him drop off. And then you got a three-man slide. So he does a good job getting his eyes back, but the center and guard also pass this off really well. Right? And this may have been, it's hard to tell if this is a four-man slide or a full slide. Probably the full just because it's a quick game. But they do a pretty good job of seeing this and picking up that, that kind of exotic look. Yeah. There. So this was one of the plays that I thought Kronk did a fantastic job blocking on because he he comes across the formation here and picks up uh, 76 and yeah. stops it because, I mean, if he misses that block, Jordan's uh, got a dude right in his face. Probably for a sack or he's got to do something. He's got to improvise. Um, so even with uh, the heat on right here, uh, he's able to get it out to uh, Perlet, who makes, I mean, probably one of the better catches we saw all night. That was it from a USF wide receiver. Uh, South Carolina State was pulling off some acrobatic stuff yeah. all all night. Um, but it was a good job by Jordan. That's kind of what we touched on earlier. Jordan's, it looks like he's really improved his pass blocking, um, at least through three games. So yeah, far. And that seventy six was not seventy six was not a small dude either. It's not no, like, he was a big boy. He's, that that's a D tackle right there because they're in that odd front look. So this is basically one of their D tackles. They just bumped out, and then this is perfect. Um, so great job by the back, and then this is like perfect placement right here, low and away. If, especially if he's coming up the back, he was coming inside, low away and outside. I mean that's like perfect placement and a really good catch. You know, if you, you tell me if you want to miss, miss low and outside here, miss miss into this miss into this guy's head on the sideline if you're going to miss. But that's pretty good so, uh, right there. Yeah, and also the the other thing I noticed here is that South Carolina State had two stand up. You know, it was an odd front, but they had two guys standing up on either on the outside. Watch with the the field side stand up. Uh, I guess you're going to call him a D end or the the rusher here does. Watch he loops and then sort of forces the right tackle and then watch him drop out there and Jordan yeah. didn't get fooled at all. Like try and go to the short side or anything. He saw it right away. Yeah. And, and they're trying and, and they're trying to just open up. They're trying to get him to fly out and open up a gigantic gate for him to blitz. 
and right. then they do a they do a great job with it, and then yeah, then he's going to try to bluff underneath this route. But I think he kind of saw that he had the single coverage out here, and that he stayed inside. So he's like, I'm going to just let it rip out there. Yeah, that's really good stuff. Yeah, so there's a lot. Of, I think there's a lot more positive signs. Um, in this game, even though the opponent wasn't great, it's kind of just, are you doing your job or not? So now you got third and one. So let's watch, watch it fast. And then... So this is like the true dart. So kind of the same idea as, bef as the one they executed really well. He's here. I think they'd like to double there, 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 and then he's pulling around. I think South Carolina, it looks like South Carolina State calls a slant. So it's kind of like, you know, they call a slant, so they muddy it up here. And then he doesn't, he does not like take the bait to go outside. So this is a great cut right here. And they're not reading it. Uh, I don't think they're reading it just because unless they're reading a second level guy. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, is he reading that the whoever is that uh, is on the logo for um, South Carolina State there? I was wondering if that was like a if they're reading that guy that far downfield. And then when they don't get, give it uh, to uh, Kronk in the mesh, is he supposed to now lead block the guy that they were, were reading? That's I'm not I, sure I think that's just. So they, I think they do, do they do stuff. I don't think they did it here, just because just watching his head. Okay. Um, but they do. I thought I saw them do stuff in the spring game where they were reading a second level guy. So I think they will do it. Um, I don't think they did it here. I think it was probably just a call, uh, a called play, because the first time, uh, the first time they ran it and gave it a crump on that ten yard run, the first play of the drive, he's here. They let him come across, and now they basically just switch roles. Now I'm the back that's coming across. He's the one going that way. So I think they just they probably predetermined here. But this is something they could read. Probably if they want to read the end and pull the tackle again, they flex him out, and now they don't have anybody blocking him. So we could read it that way. And that may be something you see for later in the season. But this is just a great run here, seeing that it's kind of bottled up. And that's kind of what you get making that switch right there is, is this kind of stuff. And then is that Wilcox right there doing a really good job? I mean, they handle the slant pretty good. Not perfect, but they just they wash it all down. I mean, look right here. I mean, he's bringing him all the way across the formation, which is good to see for him, for a guy that's so good catching the ball, that he can do that as well. And then so Conk does a nice job getting in the way there, too, to make sure yeah. that he holds up and keeps that alley. Yep. He's holding his fake, and then yeah, sees the guy trigger, and is like, "I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take a shot at him." So let's see. So first down. This is one of those ones where it's like, this is about as good as you can block outside zone. Should should Mitch peel off here and get to that second level safety, or is that just your one on one with the safety and take it? He'd be Cause... if he does peel off, he's peeling to him most likely. Okay. I mean, if so, he yeah. triggers right now, maybe, but you know, if if he overtakes, he's looking to the here. This is I think this to me this is one of those ones where you see he does peel off late. This is one of those right. ones where hey man, you make him miss, you know, it's gone. Yeah. I mean, look right here. If he wins this one. It's over. That's a touchdown. Because this is blocked uh, really, like, almost perfect. They cut. They try to cut backside. The guy plays it pretty well, but it doesn't matter. He's not making that play. Yeah. That's, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's all you're going to do. Backside, if it's his wide stretch, sometimes they'll just cut them both backside. But mm -hmm. as long as you make him do this, it's over. He's not. He's not making. He's not going to track him down from behind. So when Jordan hits the outside of that forty, when he's a, you know the bottom half of that zero, he's got to cut it up inside. But he for some reason bounces it. Um, yeah, this is the same. No, the like, that's something where you need to like kind of put your foot in the ground and kind of go forward and see where you can see where you're at from there. Yeah, this is. I think it's tough to say like yeah. 
Yeah, it'd be great. But it's the safety does play aggressive, and that's also why they're able to just throw a shot over their heads later on too. So it's kind of it's kind of six and one half dozen the other. It is tough looking here, but it is it really comes down to if you make him miss, which I mean it's not like it's not like a ton of space, but if you make yeah. him miss or you break a tackle. That's because Mitch and Jennings wipe out what three yes. guys right here, and then they've and the, so, I think it's the left guards got him reached. The centers here, he went for the cut back side, but he he's out of the play, you know. Yeah, like so. If, if this Jordan is like can put his foot in the ground and get up field. Yeah. Um, and take the defender's momentum away from him. He he may be able to bust it for twenty five. And this is where I don't know is he if he's been his own back his entire. I don't know how much stretch he's run because it's still like he's kind of – this isn't his full speed. It's obviously slow motion, but this isn't him full speed right here. You know what I mean? He's so still kind of – he's still kind of oh, – it looks like Cronkite. Still, he's still kind of thinking, all right, should so I, that, you know, should I cut it up or should, what, what should I do? Because that, that's – you guys tell me this is not his full speed right here, right? Like, No, no, no. He's dancing a little. But the, so the thing you notice about that, safe, that safety who comes down on that angle, that's the same safety I think – because it's on the yeah, that's um, you know the boundary safety. I think yeah. on the the play where Mitch scores the touchdown on this drive, or is it? I think it's on this drive. Um, that guy crashes again, and Mitch just gets behind him. Oh yeah, so they, these guys they, are they super, release up field. Yeah, yeah we talked we talked about works in our out. piece. We talked about in our, the piece uh, Friday before the game that these guys are really aggressive, and if you can you can get we that's what we talked last week. I, you know, I don't think we end up making predictions on air for the podcast, but we were talking about them. Like, if if the weather's dry, they're going to roll them because they could hit shots over the top just because how aggressive they are. But that does it does help you here. It helps you in the run game because he triggers. I mean, he triggers quick. I mean, he the the this is not you know right here. The ball has not been handed off yet. This could very easily be that. But he's already triggered for the run, because exactly. he, I, because yeah. he re, because he's got eyes on number two, and when he sees number two run block, he's gonna go. That's how they were playing. They were playing like a, I think they were playing a version of quarters, like a, just the classic. Um, I think some people just call it like cover four now, but the classic. I'm I have eyes on number two. If he goes vertical or out, I got him. If he comes in, you know, I just got two. So wherever he goes, and now if he shows run, I can pl I can fill and I could be a night. Now I got nine in the box because these guys are both run players. If they're if number two runs, you see how he triggers late to the bubble. But so that's one. What they get on that? This, they get one yard on that, and it's probably blocked perfectly. So again, like so, is the issue? You know, the offensive line. Well, in that play, they they did their jobs just about perfect, and we get you got one yard rushing. You know, is that so, just a slow, slow developing like McLeod or uh, uh, Conquer taking too long uh, to to get into the play? Is it? That's, you know, it's a tough. That, it's the outside zone, like the Alex Gibbs, the, the uh, or, yeah, and the the Shanahan's and those guys that are just like outside zone guys. Like just all I'm doing is they say that's the only thing you can run if you want to be good at it. Like it takes a lot of time to get good at that at every position. So there, there are some guys, and that Gibbs guys, one of them, that his his thing is like I'm not running anything really, but outside zone or wide zone. He'll run a few things, but most of his time is spent just running that play. He's like, if you want to run this play, you have to run it all the time. That's the only way you're going to be great at is if that's like your main play. So it's tough to get perfect really quickly. Um, so I think it's still kind of a the line's starting to pick it up. I think there'll be times where the back picks it up. And there's a time later in the game where Cronkite makes a great cut, cuts back. That may have been inside zone, but... So it just takes time. It looked like to me like he was thinking, all right, should I cut it up now? Should I just hit it? And he'll just get with more reps. He's just going to hit that thing. And then now he's running full speed at the safety. And now what are you, is the safety going to be able to break down when I'm running full speed at him? So I think that's kind of part of it is just yeah. getting used to these uh -huh. new schemes. Let's, I think I think the next play is the Johnny Ford touchdown. Um, you got second. I think that's a third down. You got second and nine. Yeah, maybe, watch Atterbury. Maybe, yeah, maybe it is this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is the TD. So watch Atterbury here uh, at right guard, and oh god, oh god, oh god, and watch McLeod step up and still hold the safety. Yeah. So the question right. here, <laughs> the question here is, 
my question here is this, right? So, so here's what a lot of uh, a lot of the four man slide stuff is. It's right. These five or these five, including him right here. The back has one to two. Or, you know, however they, if it's uh, whichever way the slide's going, right? It's four, I got my five linemen for the four down linemen and a backer, and then the back is inside out on one to two, the other two backers in a traditional 4-3 look. So here, it, they're sliding, it looks like, to the three tech. So he's sliding to the one right there. He's sliding to protect this gap. He's sliding to the three. He's outside on this on the end, and he's backside. We're big on big, so we're we're matched up in a, like a man on man type thing, right? So what I so here's what I don't. It's hard to tell exactly without being in the room with them. This guy is two gaps removed, right? The three tech from the center. So right here, if he's not flying into my gap right now, I'm not going to turn all the way back and like turn my shoulders, but I can help here. You know, I don't have to be in such a hurry. You know, I can give a hand here and maybe a half a body here and still be watching my gap. So I don't know if that, when we talked about the miscommunication between them on the podcast, I don't know if that's how they're teaching it, which is how some people teach it is like, Hey, if I don't have an immediate threat, I can kind of help back here. Like, because look who the center ends up blocking. Nobody. Nobody. So this is what I was and talking about when it said it could be just communication errors. And this is where I'm going to play in the system more. And you can see he has a hand here. And he's kind of trying to do it. Because you can see he's kind of got his right hand up there a little bit. But with no immediate threat, he could probably help out a little bit more. So I don't know. That may have been the problem right there. And he's like, oh, crap. You know, where's my help? And then he does a pretty good job of recovering and pushing him by, and then a really good job by the quarterback. Like you said, of just a little step up, right? I don't need to take off. And I heard him, they they had him talk about the play, right, in, in detail. And he said, I knew I had yeah. a touchdown as soon as I saw the pre-snap look. Yeah, exactly. He said, uh, if the safeties are on the outside, outside of the hashes, it's going to be a cover four. Yeah. Uh, and Johnny uh, has the option to break the stem for the post, and that's what he does. Yeah, so, um, and it's easy pitch and catch. So, and this is something we did when I was in school with Kerwin. Is when and I they may these guys maybe have conversions because they end up breaking off. I'm not sure what he does. He kind of does a, like a stutter go, but I don't know if he tries to break it off for a, a hook again or a curl again. But we when we ran four verts. The guy obviously the tight end a lot. It depends. They, they'll, they'll tag it, but if it's not tagged, it's usually the guy opposite the tight end has the is the converter or the he he can run the bender or the cover the cover two post right or the cover two post not the bender. So if the middle of the field's open, I'm not just going to run right into this guy. He'll be the guy that breaks to the post. He'll stay up the hat. He'll stay up his seam. So they're not we're not we're not you know there's no confusion. I'm not going to bend it in here too and we run into each other. So he was the conversion guy right here. So as soon as he saw middle field open, they were saying the same thing. Cover two post or cover four post. It's really just, we called it cover two post, but it's really middle of the field open post. And that's what he hits. And I think he really, you really want to throw it like right now. Because you don't want, luckily the safeties are, are kind of sniffing so much. You don't really want to take this throw all the way over here because you, the, these guys are way too close right now. You want that like in the middle of the U. You the want zone, hit, right? yeah, you want that, yeah, you want that thing on a rope, hitting him like really like right in here, just off screen, like maybe five yards inside the hash or a couple yards inside the hash. You want this to is, kind of this. Yeah, this is the route that Fresno State is two and zero instead of zero and two. If they throw the, if they throw this ball like McLeod does. That yeah. gets picked off against USC, and it's this exact same play that they got picked off twice in the first two weeks in yeah. overtime to lose games. Um, and if they put a little zip on it, so against a better team, you got to put some zip on that ball. Yes, and um, then luckily these guys. I mean, this guy's also what what helps with that too is he's playing at what like eight. 
I mean, he's playing at the sticks almost. He's playing at about nine yards deep. So it's like, and he's eyeing him. So that's kind of part of it too. But yeah, if against a better team and this guy's a better athlete, he might just turn and run underneath that thing. So it was a, it, so I think this penetration throws the timing off, but he does a good job of stepping up and getting the, getting the ball out, but probably not the exact spot you want, but still a really good throw, great job in the pocket and a touchdown. So, I mean, you can't complain too much. Yeah. Um, let's uh, move on. Um, so there, I think there's a play uh, toward the end of the first quarter uh, that I kind of want to go over real quick. Uh, it's <clears throat> after, after Jordan McLeod's big run to get down to like the goal line. Um, he's got a screen pass to Jernard Phillips. Kind of want to go over that a little bit. Um, Okay. Because I think that's kind of um, where we're seeing probably the the deficiencies of the offense uh, so far is the and see that's another that one going real quick um, that seemed to be like another problem right here that ball's behind Johnny Ford and he still has to make a, a good catch on it um, he's falling away from that's, yeah, falling you away can from see him. Your... And yeah. it's behind him, and Johnny has to make a one-handed catch, make a guy miss before he gains any yards. He, get, I believe, he gets the first down here. But if that ball's, you know, on target, he's running. Um, he's with also two blockers. Yeah, if I think, I him. think, like you're saying, if it's on target, he catches it here. His foot's in the ground right now, and he's already getting inside that. So this, like you met, like watching it, you may be like, man, this guy's got to get out there. But that's a tough block right here. If he catches it and can just doesn't have to turn back and he can catch it and now my foot's in the ground first of all he's not he's going to split this dude it's over and then you got a blocker here a good job blocking right there is that who is that was that a perlet stanley so, uh, no it's perlet yeah so i mean if he catch, if he's catching this full speed right here this one may go too yep and that's so, another thing where the line probably did their job so the go back to them yeah, we, this is one thing that, you know, with Quentin that we saw over the years was he would, um, this was a, a play that he just struggled with for his whole career. Um, you know, these little quick, short, you know, touch passes that Jordan looks like he struggled with at least early. Um, is that something that you can improve? Can you coach this up and make, or is it just yeah, you've got the touch for it or not? No, I think you can, because just look at his feet. It's not like he's set his feet. Just watch him. He's he tried to get out of there too quick. He's just trying to get out of his hands so fast because it's a screen. So I think he's just a little too quick. And he's you see he's like threw it from here and now he's falling back. So I, it's just I think he he probably could have he had time to turn, set your feet. He could have just set his feet right here and made the throw. Like this guy wasn't in my face. I didn't need to give ground. So I think that's just like just a inexperienced type mistake and I'm sure he's made this throw a hundred times in high school and in practice but just being out in the game sometimes you get a little bit more juiced up so yeah, I think that's you gotta you, you gotta think he's just a freshman here right he's a redshirt freshman he's gonna make these simple mistakes and yeah over the next four years he's just gonna get better and, and all this stuff will fall off I mean this is kind of stuff you may see going by you know in two weeks from now right. he may be he may sure. not be doing this anymore so he's because he's pretty with it. So, but yeah, this is just like this is kind of the trade-off, right? That you get going to a young guy is you'll get these kind of mistakes. There's a one later in the game that's like, you know, just a uh, maybe he didn't want to put the ball in harm's way, but he could have thrown it out there for an easy touchdown, but he he got the count wrong. But that, I think that's kind of like it's just the trade-off. You're going to get those little mistakes, but then you're also going to get the super explosive plays he can make with his feet. So, you know, that's kind of all right, let's see if we can get to that play you were talking about, Nate. Yeah, it's like right before the quarter ends. Um, I mean, on that play, then Norman just gets beat off his block there. Just yeah, that's just reach it. That, you reach, I teach, kind of thing right there. Yeah. 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 Norm. Norman just got whipped. Oof. That was some Temple. That was some Temple Norman right there. Man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, and everybody else, pretty good, really. So, yep. <laughs> it only uh, takes unfor one. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, it only takes one guy on the offensive line, so. <laughs> this might be it here, maybe. Yeah, so I think this gets him. 
Yeah. So this is. Yeah, so this is four verts and one. they picked it up too. At four verts and he had he had a pocket. So this one, the, the corner falls off. He'll break it off maybe, and he just yeah, it's just another shot. high throw. Yep. Let's um, watch his. Let's let's check out his. Yeah, I mean, I don't I mean, see anything. I mean, it looks. I think a he little... just missed. Yeah, sometimes sometimes I may have been worried about the guy getting under undercutting the route, and so he went yeah. high and away, just went a little bit too high and away. Yeah, that could, that could, yeah, that could be it. That could very well be it. They get the draw play here. Mitch makes a good block that springs him, um, and then he just makes a guy miss. And then I believe this it's the next play I want to talk about. Um, right here, yeah. So this is the play right here. Um, Mitch so, just misses this block, right? Isn't that, yeah, that's so, kind of, yeah. Yeah, so Jannard Phillips will walk into the end zone. Like he could like he could moonwalk into the end zone if Mitch makes this block right here. Um yeah, this is this is one of those simple count plays that he that I've got three over here and they've only got they've only got two guys. So this should be like you said, a walk in. But I mean Mitch knows it right away. Um He's like, he claws his hands like, that's on me. Yeah. He knows it, but it's like the, the, those little miscues um, that make the offense look worse than they maybe are right now that uh, maybe gave me a little bit more optimism than some. Like, like the scheme is there. It's the execution of the plays yeah. um, that I think we not... saw. It's not in one spot either. It seems to be going around. It's making, you know, the line I thought played a lot better this game, and there were times where it was maybe it was the back right here as the tight end, who's one of your better players. Mm -hmm. It just, yep. you know, guys are going to make mistakes. It just is, it seems to be one guy every play. And I used to tell my teams, you know, because early, early season's tough offensively typically, unless you're just a well-oiled machine, that, you know, and defensive coaches will probably say it the opposite, but we would always kind of say on offense, you know, if one guy screws up, the play can be dead. If one, like the last play, if the tackle just misses his block, everybody else could do perfect, the play is dead. Defense, if 11 dudes get, or if 10 dudes get blocked and one dude just smokes the offensive tackle and sacks the quarterback, well, that's a positive play for the defense, but only one guy did a great job. So yep. offense is tough. You really got to have, it sounds cliche, but you got to have all 11 guys doing their job. And for the most part, um, you can't really hide anybody. All right. Uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know we did. It's a lot of fun to kind of go deep into the weeds on some play calling and be able to talk to a guy who's uh, been coached by our offensive coordinator and has coached at the college level to kind of give us a better breakdown than what we could ever possibly do. Um, Final, I mean, final takeaways. The the concepts are there. Um, we we've seen it. We've seen some good plays. Um, I think Seth mentioned it. Just comes down to execution. And um, Olivia's really upset right now that we're ending this. Um, <laughs> she saw some of the execution. She's yeah. She, she, she wants kind of yeah. sex. She, Olivia, we just got to execute, heart. honey. <laughs> just got to execute. That's like the worst thing a coach can say, but it is like. A lot of times that's all it is. And it's like, oh, come on, dude. It's like, stop speaking in cliches. Do something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, or you can, or right. you can do that. But, I should say another way to, to your, say execute. To, Nate, to your point, though, like, you, you see that, that Jordan in the, in the first couple of drives are just really struggling. And then you just see that confidence build. And you see those mistakes, even though they're creeping back in the first quarter. You see the path and you see that light at the end of the tunnel. And you see where this team's going. And it's really exciting to see you from a fan's point of view. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, appreciate uh, Vito for cutting up the film. Um, Seth for yes, putting it into uh, uh, huddle and yeah. uh, making it a lot easier for us to handle this. Uh, said, you know, again, four-star uh, hotels at two-star <laughs> prices. That's great. Uh, Hotwire.com. You know, Hotwire, baby. And, uh, uh, let's, Let's also make sure that we thank uh, our friends at Matrix Hormones, matrixhormones.com, 813-333-2226. Next time we'll get a little panel up with uh, – maybe we'll even, like, put the website up and we can show people around. But uh, if you're – they have been great supporters of us and are capable – helping us, as well as Cedric, are helping us uh, make sure that we can get these things done. So, uh, uh, again, a Matrix Hormones, if you are feeling sluggish, not yourself, 
either in life or in the bedroom, 813-333-2226. Three field goals, three safeties, one touchdown, no PAT. Yep. Uh, appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll continue to do this if there's demand. Um, I know, I mean, we get this every week in our Slack channel, and you guys get it from the stories that uh, Seth writes, but um, seeing the film breakdown is probably uh, – I'm a visual learner, so this is definitely one of the ways to to uh, learn. And also, if you guys want to see specific things or, like, more of this or less of that, um, ask us. Put it in comments, tweets, whatever, and uh, we'll definitely try and uh, bang that out for next week as well. Actually, no, we're not going to do it next week. You know why? Because we're, we're – unless we want to do uh, SMU's uh, air raid. Do we want to do, like, a Sonny Dykes air raid breakdown? That sounds so nerdy and awesome. <laughs> It'll just be me and you, Colin. We'll be the ones to care about it. <laughs> We'll be on oh, here. Just for, we'll be on here for ten hours without anybody recording anything. It'll can be. Can we just do mesh? Can we like do two hours just on mesh? Probably <laughs> just could, one yeah. play for like two hours. The air raid guys would say that you can. You could do. We could do a whole thing just on mesh. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys listening to the and watching the Daily Stampede film room with Seth Farnador, Colin Sherwin, Cedric Padilla. Anthony Vito and myself, Nathan Bond. Uh, be sure to check us out at on Twitter at Stampede SBN, Nathan at Bulls Nathan SBN, Seth Farnador at Seth Farnador. Cedric, what's your what's what's your Twitter handle? Uh, Sed Sed Z. C E D S A I D Z E D, and he says Z because he's Canadian. Z E D because he's Canadian, my fellow Canadian. And then Anthony Vito at Anthony Vito underscore, and then at Colin Sherwin. Um, appreciate Touchdown it. Touchdown to Lane. Touchdown to Lane. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Go Bulls.